Hey guys, and welcome to Starlight Mega. So uh, I saw this on Steam as a demo, so this is only the demo version, it's not the full version. I'm not sure if this is already out or not for like the full game, um, but if I find it, I will leave it down in the description so that we can go and buy it off of Steam. But let's start. Well, here we are! Good grief! Here we are indeed. This house looks older than dirt, and there's an abundance of that too. Wow, what a, fan what a fascinating house! Fascinating isn't the word I'd use. Creepy, maybe? I wouldn't call our family inheritance creepy. Your grandfather left us this house when he died, you know. It's like a family treasure. Yeah, and he took real great care of this treasure. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and your new home will be haunted. In what way would that be lucky? I sigh as Melody's occult fascination rears its ugly head. Don't worry, Arya. I think it just needs a little love. See? You're lucky to have a sensible friend like Melody. Why? Some new curtains? Some new paint? The removal of rotting wood? Oh, Thanks so much for helping us out today, Melody. It's my pleasure, Miss Raid. I think Riyad, maybe? No, Raid. Melody is my best friend from school. She offered to stay with us the first two nights at the new house. You'll see, Arya. It won't be that difficult from our- or not difficult, that different from our old house once we get settled in. Alright girls, let's head inside. Wait, am I like middle school or high school aged? Ah, this house is pretty normal on the inside. Don't be like that, Melody. A normal home is exactly what we need. Besides, you know, Arya can be quite the scaredy cat. Mom! Ignoring my protest, Mom opens the windows and begins or opens the window and begins to allow more light into the house. The new layout will take some time to get used to, but we can work with this. Why don't you two take a look around? It'll be night soon, so you'd better figure out where the bedrooms are. I look towards Melody, who's smiling as she looks around. Melody really is feeling at home here. As that thought crosses my mind, Melody suddenly grabs my hand. Come on, Arya, let's take a look around. Okay. Most of my belongings won't be here for a few days, so we might as well see what's already here. As we walk through the house, Melody looks around enthusiastically. I begin to do the same, making a mental note of the house's layout. As we reach the top of the stairs, we find a small window blocked by a thick curtain. Light floods from the room when I push it aside. I take, it, or I take a moment to gaze out the window. The trees are endless, with no other houses in sight. So beautiful, the sight depresses me. I'm in the middle of nowhere, in an, un or in an unknown house, with only as much stuff as we could fit in the car. On top, or, and to top it off, we won't have electricity for a week at the soonest, since the power company was all booked up. Well, why couldn't Grandpa have a house near the city or something? Living here is going to be so boring. I'll just have to make the best of it. Funny, Melody. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. That was weird. I thought I just heard someone laugh. Maybe I'm just tired? After all, it'll be nighttime soon. After we finish briefly gl uh, glancing through the hallways upstairs, Melody returns downstairs to help Mom. I stay upstairs, eager to find our bedrooms before nightfall. As I look around by myself, there's a feeling of unease that I can't shake. But I know it's just my mind playing tricks on me. I come to a small and unobtrusive doorway to my left. I throw it open. This must be my new bedroom. It's a bit cramped with all the furniture, but not too much smaller than my room in our old house. This must have been Mom's room when she was younger. Finding Mom's childhood room, I feel the tension leave my body. I can't help but laugh at myself a little. Did I seriously just get worked up over nothing earlier? This place is pretty- 
pretty creepy, so of course I'm going to be a little on edge. Guess I'll go tell Melody I found our room. <laughs> huh? What the? Turn around, there's nobody there. Melody? Mom? Hello? Through one of the windows, I can see Mom out by the car stacking a couple of boxes. Melody is out of sight from me and is down a hallway. I strain my ears looking for her. I only hear wood creaking and the sound of a broom being pushed along down the street. I suddenly feel really uneasy. It wouldn't be like Mom or Melody to play a prank on me like this. Glancing around a paranoid or in a paranoid fashion, I sneak quietly down the hall. Is something here? A wild animal, maybe? I continue to look around the hall, but I find nothing. There's nothing out of place and nobody who should be or shouldn't be present. My mind really is playing tricks on me. Or maybe there's a fucking ghost in your house that is ready to myrtleize your ass. Maybe it's the stress of leaving my old life behind. Or the unease of moving into a new house. At any rate, I should try to sleep soft. <laughs> I won't get anywhere acting like this. I can keep looking around tomorrow morning. Yeah, because it's gonna be fucking pitch black out. Like, even inside of your house. Except for maybe candles like we see in the picture. But, oh my god, a dark house and no electricity in the middle of nowhere. Oh, this isn't a cliche at all. The sun had already set, leaving the house completely dark. The two of us were awake in my new room. While mom stayed down the hall in hers, Melody uh, busied herself reading a small novel with a flashlight. I look at the cover. It's typical Melody fodder. From the picture alone, it looks like something about a vengeful spirit chasing a group of teens through a haunted house. This sort of thing doesn't really help me forget the weird voice from earlier. If I heard it just once, I could probably have chalked it up to a trick of the, of the wind or creaky wood. But hearing disembodied laughter twice in one day is enough to make me shiver violently. Melody, do you really believe in this stuff? In what stuff? I point at the book. Uh, ghosts and spirits and all that. Melody holds the book so or book up so I can see the cover. Well, this one is just fiction. There's or there's a really famous movie version too. I don't mean this particular story. I mean just in general. I believe in it. I think that if people are still telling ghost stories after thousands of years, then there has to be some truth to it, right? Plus, it's a lot of fun. Isn't it more exciting to believe in the supernatural? Is everything alright? You've been acting kind of strange since earlier. No, it's nothing. It's just, I thought I heard. Surely Melody of all people would believe me. Why does this make me so nervous? But Melody doesn't seem to be bothered at all by the house. And I didn't find anything out of the ordinary earlier when I checked around. I'm the only one who's feeling uneasy about this place. Never mind, it, it's nothing. It's a new house, you know? Right. I'm sure you'll adjust in no time, Arya. I decide not to mention anything to Melody. It would be embarrassing to tell her and have it turn out to be nothing. After some time, we decide to go to bed. Good, or good night, Arya. Melody turns off her flashlight as I too enter my bed. Good night. I can't believe I just had a nightmare. I haven't had a nightmare since I was a child. I hope this doesn't become a habit. I look over towards Melody, who is still sleeping soundly. As I watch Melody sleep, I realize that something is wrong. What the? Melody, who fell asleep before I did, is now hugging a very large book. It definitely seems like something she would read, but the book itself is massive. I don't recall ever seeing her bring it along to the house. Everything is making me so paranoid. I'll ask Melody about the book in the morning. I'm sure she'll... <laughs> yeah. There was disembodied laughter for a number of times. Melody! Melody, wake up! Are ya? Melody looks at my face and adjusts her attitude. Are ya? You look terrible. Is something wrong? As Melody goes to pick up her flashlight, she suddenly realizes that she's cradling a book. Arya? Where did this book come from? 
Wait, don't tell me. That book isn't yours? No. My heart does a backflip. Did you put this book in my arms while I was asleep? Why would I do that? Wait, you're trying to scare me, aren't you? I'm not. I've never seen this book before in my life. Melody began to trace her fingers over the cover of the book and look at the pictures. I don't know where this book came from, but it's quite impressive. It's far older than any book I've held before, and the jewels on the cover are so realistic. Not to mention the intricate pages. And just what is this language? I've never read anything even close. It looks like a bunch of gibberish. Right? The language is very odd. The writing in the book is almost drafts on the side as if to lock it up. I avert my gaze as Melody continues to fawn over her new book. Is Melody so fixated that she doesn't even care how the book got there? Books don't just appear out of thin air and that laughter I heard. I look towards Melody once more. Earlier today, when we were looking around, I heard this weird laugh. Weird? It wasn't you or Mom. It was this disembodied laughter. What? R really? I don't- Melody puts the book down and grabs a flashlight from her bag. Well, I believe you. Anyhow, let's go. Uh, to where? To investigate, obviously. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Investigate what and how? Well, investigate who or what it was that was laughing. Are you crazy? I don't want to go look around now. It's dark out and we don't even have electricity. But this could be my chance. Melody presses a free hand against the ghost novel she was reading earlier, glancing at me hopefully. When I told her I was moving to this house, I was happy when she offered to come with and keep me company, but this isn't exactly the first time she's dragged me into chasing the occult. But it's not like we've ever actually found anything before. We usually just end up finding a creaky window pane or something. It will put my mind at ease. The least I can do is go with her. Reluctantly, I get up. Geez, all right. If nothing else, I can get it off my mind. That was a weird... Melody leads the way, holding the little book in one hand and her flashlight in the other. As I trail behind, we soon approach the dirty door. That strange. I don't remember seeing this door earlier today. Did we walk straight past it? The door doesn't match any of the others in the house. It's ornate and creepy. The closer we get to the door, the more nervous I feel. My heart pounds so violently that I'm pretty sure Melody can hear it. Even er, even the beam from the flashlight is muted. It looks like it's been turned off. And why? They're trembling almost as much as mine are. We stop outside the study where the door is still shut. Melody looks at me before glancing at the door. Here we go! She grabs the doorknob and turns the key. We enter the creepy room. Moonlight filters through the window, but it's still pretty dark. I shine the flashlight around the room. I can't explain why, but something feels off. Why do I feel so uneasy? We're not going to actually find anything in here. After all, I don't really believe in that superstitious nonsense. What's that? Huh? shines her light over to the bookshelves. Oh, look at the carvings on those books. 
And that book looks like it's hundreds of years old. They all look like they're hundreds of years old. Bottles of honeywort, Brisbane, hemlock. These are all used in alchemy. What was your grandfather like? I don't know. Mom never really talked about him. I shine my flashlight around the room. There's a podium in front of the desk. It looks ancient and twisted, but it's otherwise uninteresting. Whoa! What does grab my attention, however, is what is resting on top of the podium. What is that? It's so pretty! Melody focused on the dozens of books around the room, or focused on the dozen of books around the room, isn't listening. There's a stone on the podium. Well, let's see here. We're gonna pick it up. Please don't explode. Oh god, it's exploding. Oh god! Ah! Ah! White hot light floods the room, stinging my eyes. As it dies, I hear a faint laugh in place of the gem is a woman with long red hair and bright yellow eyes. She has a tail, full figure, and horns? My savior! Ah! The strange horned woman practically jumps on top of me, pulling me to a crushing hug. You freed me! What? What the hell's going on? She picks me up off the floor and starts spinning around. I desperately try to squirm away, but I only manage to make her grip even tighter. Oh, I was trapped in that dreadful stone for so long. It was awful, but then you saved me. Let me go! G get away from her, you... you devil woman! She stiffens before releasing me so fast that I fall on the floor with a loud slap. Ow! Aha! Uh -huh. Devil woman? You'd better not be talking to me that way. Ooh. Melody, don't! Too late. She hits the horn lady on the head with the book hard. Ow! Disgusting little human! Melody! St stay away! You've got some nerve! Take this! Yeah! Ugh! I'm blinded again by a bright light. I feel a gust of wind rush past me and hear a loud crash. Uh... Are you? Are you alright? Pain explodes from the back of my body. I pitch towards the ground, crumpling on the floor. Melody is next to me, grabbing my arm. My unfocused eyes slowly become aware of the demon girl lying on her back in a ruined bookshelf. Arya! Arya, what's wrong? Can't breathe. <laughs> I'm struggling to draw in enough air. My back hurts so much. I don't know how much longer I can... Don't tell me, the stone? Damn it. In an instant, the demon lady launches herself across the room, shattering the window as she jumps through it. The pain in my back seems to dissipate immediately. <sighs> I can breathe again. Just in time to hear footsteps in the hall. Mom's woken up. Arya, what is going on in here, and what happened to the window? This horn lady, this thing, it came out of a stone. A demon attacked us, and... Grandpa had the stone, see? magical smell, and then she... Mom's face turned completely red. That's enough. Arya, for the love of God, you're old enough to know better. And Melody, I expect far better from you than Arya. But not another peep out of either one of you until I get this sorted out. Go to your room. Now. We run back to my room as fast as possible. What was that? I don't know. You're supposed to be the supernatural expert. What the heck just happened? She's clutching the book close to her chest. Is it glowing? Uh, all I remember is I held up the book and it released that light. When I looked up, you were both hurt. That pain from before felt like somebody forced hot coals on my back. I don't remember getting hit by anything. And even if I did, why don't I feel anything now? That girl. Where did she come from? And why are my cheeks all red? Just what was she? Arya? Arya, wake up! It's the demon lady! Ugh. I bolt out of bed. 
How did I even get to sleep last night? Was it all just a dream? Wh what Come quickly! Uh, I'm guessing it wasn't a dream. Hey! It's that demon lady! Arya, that's no way to speak to a guest. What? Mom, she has horns! And a tail! Mom is looking at us as if we're totally crazy. It's a glamour. To her, I appear as a normal human. I can also alter thoughts and memories. A demonstration. She snaps and twirls her fingers around Mom's head. Mom begins to hum and skip away. Anyways, what's with this demon lady business, hmm? I do happen to have a name. It's Lyria. She peers at me expectantly, but I'm completely struck dumb. And your name is? Don't give her your name! That's how they control your mind! What? You're so annoying and ignorant! <laughs> um, please, I mean no harm. In fact, I only came to talk. What should I do? But this is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. I know that this is a demo and I should probably play all the way through, but this is probably going to be like a two, three parter. So I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and leave a like down below if you did like this one. So bye-bye.